You know, New York's junior senator is largely still unknown, but Kirsten Gillibrand is still the incumbent, isn't she? And the one to beat this fall. Appointed by, let's just say, PR challenge New York Governor David Patterson. Challenges are lining up because Ms. Gillibrand's poll numbers, like those of many Democratic incumbents, are going down. With me now, the guy who hopes to take advantage of all that, uh, former New York Republican Congressman, Joseph Diaguardi. Uh, by the way, you might recognize that name. His daughter is American Idol judge, Cara Diaguardi. Uh, good to have you, Congressman. Um, Hi. Happy to be here. Uh, well, you're up against idolite competition here because, uh, you know, even, a, you know, a, a challenged incumbent is, is, is a heavy odds-on favorite, generally. Not all the time. But don't forget, generally. she was appointed. Absolutely. She has Absolutely. not been elected. But she's the senator. And this is a special election. I would go in for two years. So this is something that I think has to be viewed differently. And you say that you've got a signature issue going for you. Yes. I happen to be the first practicing certified public accountant ever elected to Congress. Is that true, in. really? It is true. And when I left, I wrote a book called Unaccountable Congress. It doesn't add up. And guess what I put on the cover 17 years ago? A congressman's voting card, which is the same size as your credit card. And let me give you the real deal. Here it is. It doesn't work anymore, but this, in Chapter 1, I called the most expensive credit card in the world. A congressman's voting card. Why? It has no limit. They just keep raising the debt ceiling to pass it on to the next generation, and here it is on the cover of the book. Credit line unlimited, expiration date never, bill to So what's your generation. platform going to be? Just stop spending? Or because, you well, know, Republicans were it's, hardly it's, loath to spending. Okay. They were. But let me tell you, both parties have had a problem on this. I, you cannot just blame one party. Uh, we're spending money we don't have, and we're borrowing from countries we don't trust and don't share our what values. What would you do? Number one, we have to tell the truth. The big problem today is we have an accounting system, not like the Securities and Exchange Commission imposes on you to protect shareholders. What are we doing to protect taxpayers? Look at what's off the books. You remember Enron? Special purpose entities? Keep the losses, keep the debt off the books. Washington calls them government-sponsored enterprises. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. They don't approve. All of which are still going broke. And, and, PBGC and, and, is, and, is in deep, deep. Right. And, and guess what? The full faith and credit of the United States government is behind them. That's why they're able, they're able to borrow at low rates. But if they go bonkers, which they just did, and I forecasted it, and people said, Joe, that's never going to happen. That's an implicit guarantee. Bull. That's no implicit guarantee. It just happened. We had to pony up the money. In New York's, look at Albany. What do they call there? Authorities. 600 of them. You got MTA, Power Authority. Battery Park Authority, these are all off the books, off the budget. But you've also got what Senator Jim Bunning got in a heap of trouble for a couple of weeks ago when he wanted to vote against an extension on unemployment benefits because he has the gall to say, Congressman, the money wasn't there to pay for it. So he was treated as a nut. They're going to treat you as a nut. No, but maybe that was the wrong way to show the power of a senator. Ask me, Neil, what would I do? When the bill to come up with raising the debt limit, when that bill came up, I would not have voted for a two trillion, a two billion dollar. What was it now? Two trillion dollar raise, because we're we're anticipating. I know that, but if you wanted, to I would have said, let's keep a short leash on this thing. Let's go a month or two at a time. Let's make they it didn't pay even for have that. They didn't have that concept. So it was like, uh, would you put the risk of of not giving benefits to the jobless? No, I think that that was a symbolic thing on his part to show that he was fed up with all spending. Yeah, so you're he finally relented. Against, uh, he finally and, relented. And against yeah. special exemptions? Yeah, no, but, but you've got to look at what the priorities are. And let me tell you, when you see so many things yeah, off see, the books... You, know, you would never win an idle competition with you don't this think so. gray area. Because you're either for or against. <laughs> well, you can't be... The world is not black and white. You have to look at what the, the, the edges are. So but I know in my, might vote you off, in right? my area, your daughter would vote you off. If you don't put everything on the book, I know, but you're, making, truth, you're already making an exception. What, where's the exception? Well, on this, you could take a, a, on a, on a point benefits and extend them a week or so at a time, a month at a time. No, I said the debt limit. The I know, but, but where do you draw the line? Well, what let, me, the, let me start with where the bleeding is. When you raise the debt limit so that you could spend another trillion, 500 billion, which is what our president said is going to be the deficit. That's going to be the excess of spending over revenues. You've got problems, and we've got to stop that. And I believe I can. I'm the kind of guy that would get in there, be assertive, be active, and stop the kind of spending that's destroying America. We can't borrow from countries we don't trust, and we can't spend any money we don't have.
Congressman, we'll watch very closely. Uh, by the way, we did put out a call to Senator Gillibrand's office. She heard the Congress was here, and she said, forget it. No, she just, we never.